Hi guys, so uh, let's uh, go over uh, example six, seven, and eight here that we didn't get to get to do in class today. I just want to uh, discuss a few of these things. I think it's these are not too difficult, but there's some quite a few things we have to add that uh, I feel like the textbook glossed over slightly. So, in any case, uh, it says talks about sample size and it says when conducting a survey you need to make the size of your sample large enough so it accurately represents the population and of course as the sample size increases the margin of error decreases if you take statistics at some point you will uh, see that a larger sample size is always better okay so having a larger sample size larger sample size is always better in uh, many regards. Actually, in this regard, we're talking about uh, decreasing the margin of error, getting a better uh, prediction. Um, but there's uh, many other advantages of having a larger sample size. And so uh, the question is, what is margin of error? Why are we even talking about this? So it says margin of error gives the, a limit on how much the responses of the sample would differ from the responses of the population. So if I'm doing a survey and I'm trying to find a proportion of people that would say one thing, uh, as in down here, it says uh, people who prefer a specific candidate, then uh, a margin of error would tell me, you know, uh, the statistics that I did to find out this uh, number, which they hear, they say 40% of people say they prefer a candidate. Um, the margin of error tells me how far I might be overestimating that or underestimating the actual population value. All right, so um, so that's a limit on how much the responses of the sample would differ from the responses of the population. And so then they give throw out some numbers here. And they say, for example, 40% of the people in the poll would prefer candidate A, and the margin of error is plus minus 4. So what is this thing they're talking about here? So they're saying 40% would prefer candidate A, plus minus 4% is my margin of error. Okay, so this thing is called the margin of error. And actually, what we call the entire thing, the margin of error plus the estimate, is called a confidence interval. Okay, a confidence interval. In the textbook, I think they just call this an interval, but um, it's really called the confidence interval in statistics. And you can see that's how these two numbers came about. If I take 40 minus 36, 40%, mi uh, sorry, 40% minus 4%, which is the margin of error, then I get 36%. And here, 44% came from taking 40% uh, plus 4%. So I can either be, uh, my estimate is either, f the, the truth of the population is either 4% higher or 4% lower than my estimate. And so that's what, that's where these two numbers uh, came from. Okay, and again, this is called a confidence interval. So uh, you can also write it like this, 36 to 44. Uh, if, you know, you probably should percent, put percentages in there. Uh, so that those two are both examples of confidence intervals. And so uh, if you're okay with that, um, it's, it's, it's really a big topic, but uh, we're just lightly touching on it here in Algebra 2. Uh, I hope you take AP Statistics, you'll learn more about that. Um, but so the question is then, okay, if I want to achieve a certain margin of error, so if I want to achieve a certain margin of error here uh, for my survey or my study, how big should the sample size be that I take? Okay, so we said the first thing we said today was... Um, that uh, larger sample size is better, uh, it reduces the margin of error and gives me a more accurate prediction of the population. And so question then is, well, how big should my sample size be to 
achieve a specific margin of error. So there's a formula here. It says when the random si uh, sample of size n is taken from a large population, the margin of error is approximated by this formula. So margin of error is plus minus 1 over root n. All right. Uh, this means that if p, if the percent of people, of uh, the percent of the sample responding a certain way is p as a decimal, in other words, a proportion as a decimal, so a fraction written as a decimal, then the percent of the population that would respond the same way is likely to be between this and this. This is actually a huge, huge topic that we're just kind of glossing over. So. P is actually a proportion of uh, people who responded a certain way. In this sample, okay. And actually, in, in statistics, we use different notation for this, but that's fine. Uh, you're not going to be asked to find p. You're not going to be asked to calculate this number. Uh, it's okay. You know, don't worry about that too much. It's more of if they give you that number, and then you know, can you do something with it? That's that's what we're going to do here. If I give you the proportion, can you build a confidence interval? You know, a simple confidence interval, um, something like that. And so. They're showing you here what to do. And so that, you know, the P, the P value that we're talking about here, the proportion of people in your sample that responded a certain way is this number over here. Okay, so this 40% here was our P, and then our margin of error was the plus minus 4%, all right? And so uh, that's where we got the 40 plus minus four, and that gave us the confidence interval. All right, so that's what this is talking about. Now here they just gave us a formula for the margin of error, formula for the margin of error. So we can do some calculations with this. Uh, I'm trying to be very clear about what all this means. I don't think it's that clear necessarily from this uh, uh, explanation in the textbook, but the, the actual calculations we'll do will be much simpler. All right, so example six says this, uh, in a survey of 1,535 people, 48% preferred one brand of toothpaste over two others. What's the margin of error? Right, what's the margin of error? So again, this is my sample size N, and this is my proportion P, okay? Proportion P, or percent, but actually we call it proportion. And so um, what's the margin of error? Well, all I have to do is use the formula margin of error, I'm abbreviating this, margin of error, and say that is equals to plus minus 1 over root n. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, what is the margin of error? Well, the margin of error is plus minus 1 over root 1, 5, 3, 5. Uh, and if you do that calculation, you get that's plus minus 0 0.026. And please remember that um, we're always talking about decimals. This formula only works for decimals. Okay, so let me erase some of this annotation I have here and uh, just point it out to you. The, um, the formula works for decimals, all right? So this is P expressed as a decimal. Uh, in our case, P is not a decimal, it's a percent, so the P is actually 0.48. Um, and so when I get this number here, that's the margin of error expressed as a decimal. So um, let's just make a note here. This always works with decimals, all right, with decimals. So the answers you get are decimals, but if you want to write the margin of error in a corresponding fashion to the proportion, then you want to write uh, um, a percent, then this would be 2.6%. Uh, you just move the decimal twice, okay, 2.6%. So that's the margin of error as a percent, right, as a percent, and this is as a decimal that comes out of the formula. So uh, same thing, 
question, uh, follow-up question then, give an interval of percentages that is likely to contain the exact percent. You can write this a few different ways. You can Actually, this is an interval. You take the p-value, 48%, and you say plus or minus 2.6%. That's an interval. They show things like that on the news all the time. Uh, or you can actually build the interval by doing the math and subtracting it. So you get uh, two numbers, the lower bound and the upper bound. So if I do 48% uh, minus 2.6%, I get 45.4%. And if I do 48% plus 2.6%, I get 50.6%. Okay, And so this would be my lower bound and this would be my upper bound. In, in other words, the smallest I can expect the population percent to be and the largest I can be expect the population percent to be. Another way then of writing this is like this, 45.4%, uh, comma, and 50.6%. Uh, this is like interval notation that we've been doing all year, except that this... Uh, when you do confidence intervals like this, we mean that 45.4% is actually included. It's actually included. Okay? Uh, so we don't, you don't write a confidence intervals this way, uh, which is a little bit confusing, but you don't write confidence intervals this way. You don't have to do the square bracket to show inclusion. That's not necessary. This is perfectly fine for confidence intervals. You just show it's from there to there. All right, uh, example seven, very similar. It's a repeat, basically. Uh, here we say the sample size is 1,011, and here is our uh, percentage of people who said that television is the main source of news. So that's P, you can also write it as 0.52. I guess we can leave it as 52%. Uh, and then, it asks again the same question, what's the margin of error? So the formula we have, margin of error, is plus minus 1 over root n. Okay, and then in this case, we're just going to fill stuff in. So plus minus 1 over root n, which is square root of 1011. And that's about uh, plus minus 0 0.031. All right. Uh, and so you can also say that's about 3.1% is the margin of error, about plus minus 3.1%, okay? And then given interval, same thing again, given interval. So here is my uh, uh, p-value, 52%, plus minus the margin of error, which is 3.1%. And again, you can do this with decimals too. Either one is fine. Um, you know, we can use it as percent or decimals. All right. And so you can do uh, either leave it like that or calculate the upper and lower bounds, uh, which would be 52% uh, minus 3.1%, and that would give you 48.9%. Uh, uh, from there to 52% plus 3.1%, and that will give you 55.1%. And uh, then you can write this interval this way. It goes from 48.9% to 55.1%. Okay? And uh, this, I think this is maybe a little bit easier to read, this type of an interval, because you have all the information right in front of you without having to think about it. Think about the math. Any case, either way is fine. And then um, let's look at example eight. Uh, this is a different question. This is saying uh, um, what type of sample size do I need to achieve a margin of error? So here we've been calculating uh, margin of error uh, itself, margin of error itself. So this is saying I want to achieve a certain margin of error. So what sample size do I need? Uh, example 8 is asking a different question. It's saying, um, how many people were surveyed 
to achieve the margin of error of plus minus 3%. Okay, so again, it's, it's the same formula. We're talking about margin of error, we only have this one formula to work with in Algebra 2, and that's this. Okay, that's our formula. Um, so they gave us, there is uh, the margin of error. Again, you need to make that a decimal. Okay, you convert this to a decimal to use it in the formula. The formula only works on decimals, so 0 0.03, uh, 0 0.03, sorry, not percent, uh, and it's plus minus. And then I take that number and substitute it into my formula, and then I can figure out to achieve this margin of error what sample size were, was used. And so I just do this, uh, plus minus 0 0.03, equals plus minus 1 over root n and then just solve that just solve that okay and so if I solve this uh, I like to just go ahead and square both sides immediately and that eliminates the sign business you can also just divide them out if you want and that gives you this number 0 0.0009 equals to 1 over n if I square a square root, the square root cancels, and squaring one just makes it one. Okay, so that's what I have. Uh, and then two ways you can do this. Number one, you can just uh, take the reciprocal of the right and also take the reciprocal of the left. Okay, or you can think of it as cross multiplication. So if I think of this as cross multiplication, something like this, what I'm doing is saying uh, 0 0.0009 times n equals 1, right? because there's technically a 1 underneath here, uh, and then just divide by 0 0.009, divide by 0 0.0009, and you'll see actually these two, side, these two techniques yield the same thing. And then if you type that number in your calculator, uh, you get this. Uh, n is about, I should say approximately, 1111.11, one, 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 one one, one, uh, like one bar. Right? Uh, and so, of course, both of these will yield the same answer. n is about 1111.11 one, 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 one one, one bar, carrying on forever. Um, but we're talking about sample sizes to achieve a margin of error. And so whenever this goes over uh, a whole number of people or things, we just round it up to the next one. Okay, So we, we'll, be, we'll be safer, actually, if we round up to the next one. We'll, we might get a slightly smaller margin of error, which is better. Okay, So uh, we're going to round this up. So always, always uh, round your sample size up. Okay, so that's the rule. This is the rule in general. So you're always going to the next whole number or the next positive integer. Since we're talking about people or individuals, we're not doing uh, fractional things. So it's going to be one, 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 two. That's the safest way to go. Okay, and so remember we said larger sample size is always better. It reduces the margin of error. So if we go with 1112, we will definitely have a margin of error that's at biggest 0.03. Okay? And so that's that, um, that's that example. I hope this helped you guys.